morning. Um, so happy to have you here this morning. We are so excited for our guests today and cannot wait to get to their talk. So I hope you guys are excited as I am. Um, for those who this is your first Creative Mornings or you haven't met me, I'm Corey Price. Um, I started as the host a couple months ago and this is our second Zoom call. So let's get started. So we've been using some of the reactions this morning. Um, we, we love seeing reactions throughout the talk. So Jeremy just did the applause one. Um, so there's, there's a couple ways to get to that. If you're on a Mac, we've got that for you there. It's the control um, or command space bar. Plenty there. The other thing is there's a raise hand feature. So if you're in, um, if you're able to look at the participant view, then there's this raise hand icon. We're gonna use that right now. So who is new to Creative Mornings? Raise your hand. You can also raise your hand on the video. I can see most of you. Cool, well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm so happy you guys are here with us this morning. Oh, and Abby as well. Cool, welcome. All right, so I talked about that group photo, so I hope Beignet is still nearby, and maybe Thelma or Louise are, are around as well. If you've got babies, bring them in. We're gonna take a couple group photos. I'll count us off. Get your best cheesy face on. Maybe it's 7-Eleven flavored cheese. Okay, I'm gonna get, get my, my little cursor thing here going. All right, so if you've got your friends, one, two, three. Okay, I had to hold that and also take a screenshot, so that was a little awkward and I hope it doesn't look bad. All right, we're gonna take another one. This is just like real life where there's a group of people and you know, the photographer tells you, you know, we gotta take a couple and then they lie and we take like more than a couple. So we're gonna do that now. Ready? One more time. One, two, three. Okay, I think two's enough. <laughs> All right. So this morning's theme is underdog. And I think we've got the perfect guess for underdog. Also, we get to throw in a pun, so I'm pretty excited about that too. But first, I wanted to make sure that we give a shout out to all of our sponsors. So we'll start with the global sponsors first, which is MailChimp. So all those emails you've been getting, that's who we're using. They have a partnership with Courier and they've created a mini edition of Courier's Business of Design magazine. And you can download that from free from Courier's website. Jeremy's gonna dro drop some of the links that I talked about this morning into the chat. The next one is WordPress. Um, and they have this Own Your Content series, uh, which is a series of interviews and other resources that are geared towards content creation. And those resources are available on WordPress's website. And then Basecamp, which is a project management tool. And they have this new thing called Hey, and they're offering a 14 day trial period. It's a new approach to email. And that link's going to the chat too. So thank you, Jeremy. And also I wanna take the time to, to thank our local partners because we really couldn't do this without you. Um, so that's Worth Higgins and Associates, Ting, The Freelan, Willow Tree, UVA Arts, The Bridge, and New City Arts. So we'll hear from a few of them um, today. And first up is Lisa Jevic from The Freelan. So Lisa, if you wanna unmute and let us know what you got to say today. Sure, thanks Corey. Hi everyone. Um, so I just want to share in case those of you out there are not familiar with what we're doing virtually right now. Um, we've got this new program called the Freeland from Home. And if you go to our website, you can go to the Freeland from Home page and see what we've got going on. So tonight we are having our third art and wine night. It's a virtual wine tasting and art talk. Um, tonight's is with Ankita Ridge, um, and if you don't have time to go out and buy the wine that they're tasting, that's fine. You can still um, log in. It's a, a Zoom webinar. Um, Ankita Ridge will be talking about two of their wines, and our director, Matthew McClendon, will be talking about two works of art from our collection. 
Um, and these have been really fun. And I know we're all really zoomed out right now, but um, it's actually fun to just sit at home and drink some wine and look at some art and listen to people talk about it. And um, it's, it's been a really just nice relaxing thing to do on a Friday evening. Um, we've got some other virtual activities that um, you can find things that you need, either need to register for, like the virtual looking inward, which is our um, meditative art tour that we've been doing for many years now, and she is now doing it virtually. Um, we've got one more zoom into art. So if you have kids between the ages of seven to 12, this is a great at home activity for them to do that our, um, our docent coordinator, Emily Lazaro is doing it's she's she shows the kids art and there's an activity with it and it's been really really popular and we're, we've got one more of those coming up next week and then I'd love if you could go to our YouTube channel we have really um, beefed up our YouTube channel with with the fact that you know you can't come into the museum right now so we've got a new program called curatorial clips which is a two-minute art tour art talk by a variety of people. So our curators, our director, some of the faculty in the art history department. And um, yeah, so it's, those are gonna be posted on our, our YouTube channel every week. There's gonna be more of those. We still have the beautiful tour of the Inside World, World Exhibition, which was the Memorial, Aboriginal Memorial Poles. And it was a collaboration we did with the Kluge Roo. So that is on our YouTube channel. Um, for those of you who remember when we did the Signs of Change project if, uh, two years ago, we have the talks now on our YouTube channel and we felt that it was really, really important that those be available for everyone to see. So some really, really important information. Um, Charlene Green gives her talk about Black history in Charlottesville. Lewis Nelson gives a talk on slavery at the university. And Professor Andrew Carl talks about uh, housing inequalities. Um, really, really interesting talks. So I highly recommend you check those out as well. And we also have several art tutorials that are um, on our YouTube channel. So if you've got kids or if you're just looking for something creative to do yourself, um, check that out. And if anyone has any feedback, I would actually love to hear from the Creative Mornings audience. Things that you would love to see us doing. What, what could get you more involved with the Freyland. So if, if you have something to share, send me a message in the chat and I'll, I'll send you my email address and you can reach out. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lisa, who loves specifically Hellman's Mayo. <laughs> Appreciate the announcement from you. All right, next we have Alan Gafinski from The Bridge. Hey. Hi everyone, Alan here. Uh, just real quick, I wanted to say that um, we're, uh, I wanted to let everyone know about uh, an, a new little project that we're, we're uh, rolling out at the bridge. Um, we're, uh, as you all know, we, as a world, as a country, as a community, uh, are dealing with two global pandemics, uh, one being an unchecked virus and the other being systemic racism. Um, and with, uh, with our gallery not being able to, you know, very easily host uh, large audiences, we're making it available as temporary short-term studio space for anyone uh, doing anything kind of creative or, um, or artistic or cultural at all in the realm of either, um, either, either reckoning with either of those pandemics or like folks who are displaced by either of those pandemics. Um, uh, there is a link I think that Emma just shared that uh, where you can hop onto our website and request some short-term studio space, whether that's a week or, you know, you know, every, every Tuesday at 10 a.m., whatever it is, uh, uh, just make that request on a little Google form and we'll do everything we can to make our space available to our community. Thanks. Great, thanks, Alan. And next we have Maureen Bronteich, back from maternity leave from New City Arts. Hey, everyone. Um, 
sorry, there's not a baby on, on screen right now, maybe later. Um, I just wanted to make a quick announcement, which I think Lindsay mentioned last month for those of you that were here, but um, back in March, New City Arts and the Bridge um, co-launched a um, emergency relief fund for artists in the Charlottesville area. Um, and since March, the fund has given away um, 162 grants to local artists. Um, artists can apply for up to $300 um, to support um, anything they need. So groceries, rent, um, studio rent, um, bills. Um, in the application, if you are an artist and you're interested in applying, we still have um, some funds remaining and um, you just have to let us know what income you lost. So that can be um, if a tour you were playing was canceled or, or if you lost um, supplemental income, like you were working at a restaurant and lost your job. Um, if you go to newcityarts.org, um, you'll find the fund on the homepage um, and the application um, is intended to be really straightforward. Um, we have granted about $47,000 in funds um, through those grants and um, based on applications and need, we are trying to reach 50,000 for that fund um, because it'll continue and be ongoing as long as there are funds available. So if you're um, interested in giving to the fund, you can also go to that same link, newcityarts.org, um, and there is a place in the fund um, description where you can go on and give uh, directly to it so that that money will be regranted to local artists in the community. Um, neither the Bridge or New City Arts are taking any sort of administrative fee from the fund. Um, so all of the money is, 100% of it is regranted to artists in need. Um, so I just wanted to mention that in case you're an artist who um, could use $300 towards uh, costs that, that you are facing right now, um, or if you're interested in supporting those artists directly. Um, I think Emma just dropped the link in the chat. So you can go directly there if you have any questions. Um, about the fund, you can email um, me at maureen at newcityarts.org. Great. Thanks, Maureen. All right. And one more announcement. This one is from um, one of our, our sponsors, Worth Higgins and Associates. Um, Scott Hudson's on, but he's got a puppy. So I'm going to do a little bit of the talking for him. Um, so they have partnered with a local designer to create these really fun and clever greeting cards that you can send to family and friends uh, to let them know that you're thinking of them. Um, I also am a fan of fun snail mail, so maybe you could spice up somebody's mailbox with something other than, than bills and, and advertisements, so that's also fun. Uh, we just copied in the link to the chat so you can check them out and place an order if you'd like. So thanks Scott for letting us know about that. And hope that puppy's being a good puppy right now. Um, so a quick bit about who Creative Mornings is for those who are just joined and a reminder for um, those who are familiar with Creative Mornings. There are 215 chapters across the globe in 67 different countries with 20,000 attendees per month, 8,000 and more talks online, and 9.1 million video views. So this is such an expansive thing, and I love that our small town of Charlottesville is a part of something super large and, and big across the globe that is supporting the creative community. So thanks for being with us today. And one other thing that we like to do with Creative Mornings is read the manifesto, and we've got a virtual version of our manifesto. And another thing that we love is for someone in the audience to um, volunteer to, to read it. So um, maybe raise your hand or, or wave at me if you've got your video on, if you're interested in volunteering to read. I'll pull up the participants window so I can see everyone. No takers? Or maybe I just can't see. Adrian, Adrian. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I went to the other one and now I see you. So when you're ready. Okay. Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections, in learning from others, in jazz hands, virtual claps, and virtual snaps. 
We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they, that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. Thank you so much. That was great. All right, so it's that time. It's time for a speaker. So, Stiltswalker is an incognito public artist and criminal at large who currently creates artwork for the people of Charlottesville, Virginia. Walker's primary medium is sausage, or rather large wheat pasted prints of hot dogs that can be found on public walls throughout Charlottesville. Though it started off as a one off insight joke among friends, Stilts Walker's cartoon Frankfurters eventually found their political voice and evolved to include leftist propaganda and social commentary. The Weenies have been a street art staple in Charlottesville since 2019 and have been chronicled on Instagram at their handle Stilts Walker. So as a reminder, as we mentioned in the email, uh, to preserve their anonymity uh, during the event, we're going to share their talk as a pre-recorded video, uh, but they are online and they will answer questions live. Uh, the just important thing, because of the delay between the computer generated voice that they'll use, um, as you think of questions or have questions, please go ahead and, and put them in, the, in the, the chat so that they'll be able to craft their response and be ready to go for the Q&A. Um, the also thing that I want to let you all know about in case there are any kiddos in earshot is that there is some cussing in the video, so grab a pair of headphones or um, something to that effect uh, if, if you've got some, some folks in, or kiddos in the room um, that may not want to listen to that this morning. But other than that, I think we're going to load the video and off we go. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Corey. Good morning everyone. Hello. I hope you all are doing well on this Friday morning. I'm happy to be here. And by here I mean here, in my home. Still. Still in my apartment. And by happy I mean pissed off. Really pissed off. So I guess, what I actually meant to say was, I'm really pissed off that I'm still here in my house. Still under siege half a year into a pandemic catastrophe that could have been prevented if our fascist leadership wasn't so deliberately neglectful and reckless. Damn it. But, anyways, I digress. Before I start, I need to ask you a question. Are you a cop? You're not a cop, are you? Because, you know, you have to tell me if you're a cop. That's the law. You have to tell me if you are a cop. LOL. My name is Stilts Walker and I am an incognito public artist and criminal at large. K 
Can I ask those of you out there who have seen my work around town to please raise your hand? Thanks. That's quite a few of you. I'm glad to hear you all are very aware of your surroundings and changes in your environment. That's a good quality to have. Though I've lived here on and off for years, I've found that this little town of ours still has some secrets to share if you are on the lookout for them. Like some of you, I've seen this town change quite a bit over several decades. Some good changes and some bad changes. Is I have been finding a lot of satisfaction in making my own small, temporary edits to our surroundings. In a town that has changed so much since I was younger, it makes it all feel a little more familiar. Sort of like decorating the inside of your high school locker door. I'm glad for the opportunity to share a little about my creative efforts with you this creative morning. It feels sort of strange to be delivering this message to you this way. I know it sounds like it, but I am not actually a computer. If you haven't figured it out already, this is not my real voice. I'm an actual human person. But in an effort to remain anonymous, I'm experimenting with voicey changey thingy and hoping it doesn't become too monotonous and monotone for you to continue to pay attention. Maybe I'll throw in a naughty cuss word every now and then, just to keep it interesting. Do you think it would be funny to hear a computer voice say bad words? Shit. Shit shit. Shit 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 shit. LOL. That never gets old. Okay, let's try to stay on topic here. You all are acting childish. Anyways, a little more background about me. My primary medium is sausage, or rather, large wheat pasted prints of hot dogs that can be found on public walls throughout Charlottesville. The first time I put one of these happy hotties on the wall, I was just screwing around with some extra supplies and thought it would be a good laugh for people walking past. I put the first one up on the wall that I walk past near my apartment so I could monitor it each morning on my walk to work. It all started as a one-off goof, but the wieners beckoned. The cartoon Frank Furs eventually found their political voice and evolved to include more and more leftist propaganda and social commentary. Funny how that happens. As these illustrations started to adopt a more aggressively leftist voice, I began to appreciate and embrace the contrast between the playfulness of the illustration and the seriousness of some of its messages. It seems like some other folks did as well. Here's a screen grab of both Mayor Walker and Councillor Payne on Facebook sharing the weenies thoughts on the military industrial complex. As you can imagine, I was surprised to see these two elected officials sharing my vandalism. It was also a fond surprise to see this one show up one day in the daily progress. Also, people tag me in stuff like this every now and then. Last year, I also had the pleasure of being able to meet with beloved culture reporter Erin O'Hare in an abandoned Chili's parking lot for a spotlight in the local weekly paper. I hope they didn't mind my unique way of saying thanks. Here's a snap of an uncompromising Frank that went up near the skate park around the time the president tweeted threats to bomb Iranian cultural sites. Highly visible from the 250 bypass, this hot dog clearly wants you to know its thoughts on who our real enemies are. Here is a recent photo of Captain Obvious hanging out on Water Street. As this one went up, I couldn't help but imagine the teeth I would lose if I were to get caught in the act by the police. This one went up near the Beck Cohen building last year. If I remember correctly, I think I put this one up in two pieces and used a ladder to install it. This rad weenie is just stoked to get tricks or die trying. This hot dog would prefer that immigration and customs enforcement would just fuck the fuck right off. I can't remember if this went up as the president was taunting North Korea or bombing an Iranian airfield. Either way, the quote alludes to some grim consequences. I was really surprised how long this one stayed up, given its prominence. 
It's under a nice little overhang that protects it from the elements a bit, so it was looking good there for over six months before it was removed. In the last few months, this Frank made some friends with some artwork by some other anonymous artists who clearly are more talented than me. Here you see a saucy addition to the wall, as well as Our Lady of Anti-Fascism. These smaller, cocktail weenies are fun to put up because they take very little effort and time. I often have a stack of 30 or so with me when I'm heading out to put up the big dogs. That way, if I find a nice little spot, I can throw one up real quick. People seem to like spotting the little ones hanging out in hidden little places all over town. I'm able to get pretty bold about where I install these, because they go up quickly and I can do them pretty inconspicuously. When I put this one up on the corner under the railroad bridge, I just waited for the safety ambassador to turn his back real quick. Right when the whole country closed down, I thought I'd take advantage of the empty streets to make some trouble before things got back to normal. Ha, ha, ha. It turns out I had a lot more time than I thought. I believe both of these are still up now. The funny thing about both of these is that I wasn't making a political statement when I pasted them up. I was just trying to make a whimsical public service announcement. Now, political leadership has made public health controversial. The giant hot dogs please for good hygiene are suddenly controversial. That might be the most absurd sentence I've ever said. It's also fun to consider how the Franks interact with their surroundings. Like this one that's hanging out on the side of the police station. Or this one that edits an advertisement into a statement of solidarity against police brutality. And this one has ridden his little hobby horse all around the Lee statue, George Rogers Clark, and, really, all over town. I've installed both large and tiny versions on newspaper stands, bus stops, road signs and more. Here's an encouraging friend. I tried to install him way up high on this wall next to this other vanilla ballooner, but I was unprepared for how big and unwieldy the print was. I found a nice spot around the corner instead. Sometimes you just have to cut your losses. The high dogs are able to deliver aggressive and serious messages in a disarming manner that is exciting slash edgy, and also humorous. The hot dog is almost sort of daring anyone to get bent out of shape about a message someone might disagree with. Because it's embarrassing to get into an argument with a stupid, cartoon, hot dog. I believe the internet calls this tactic, trolling. I like to think of it as a sort of reverse propaganda in protest of the narratives that the powers that be push upon us. And I believe this kind of action is a useful, subversive tool for helping shape culture in a direction that embraces anti-fascist values. This creative activity has been a fun and meaningful effort for me, though often stressful. I always have to look over my shoulder to see if there are police about to pounce on me, or narc bootlickers who like to call the cops on art. And to any cops who might be investigating this presentation for hot leads, I say, why don't you put that effort into fucking finding Sage Smith? The Webster Dictionary defines underdog as, quote, a loser or predicted loser in a struggle or contest, or, a victim of injustice or persecution. I'm going to share a bit about my process now, but, before I do, I'd like to lead us in a brief meditative exercise to put us in the right frame of mind. I want you to close your eyes with me right now. I'll put on some soothing music to set the mood. this question. You can feel free to share your thoughts in the chat, or just keep it to yourself and hold it in your heart. My question to you is this, what was the moment you became radicalized? Was it the moment they let Roger Stone walk free? Was it the moment you had to spend $450 on an inhaler for your daughter? 
Was it the moment you were tear gassed for marching peacefully in support of basic human rights? Was it when your president referred to your terrorizers as, quote, good people? Was it when our leadership's response to the coronavirus pandemic demonstrated that your life is only valuable to the extent your labor can be exploited for the sake of generating wealth? Was it when you learned that wealth disparity is worse now than it was during the Gilded Age? Was it when you learned that the income gap between black and white workers has remained the same for half a century? Was it when 11 million documents held by a Panama-based law firm exposed that the world's richest people have all been stealing from you for years by a tax evasion, but still nobody faced consequences? Were you radicalized while watching your government wage unjust wars in the Middle East for literally over two goddamn decades and counting? Was it when you began to understand that the American education structure preserves the American caste system? Was it when you learned that minimum wage would be nearly $20 per hour if the federal minimum wage had grown at the same rate as American productivity? Was it when drone strikes on weddings made you realize that you have more in common with an Afghani civilian than you could ever have with the American oligarchy? Was it when state police drove military vehicles through Richmond and shot civilians with less lethal weapons in their own homes? Was it when you looked out the window this morning and saw Robert E. Lee still perched proudly on his horse in the middle of town? Was it when unmarked special police forces violently removed peaceful demonstrators so President Trump could awkwardly hold a Bible upside down for a photo opportunity? Was it the baby cages on the southern border? Was it Rex Tillerson? Was it Jeffrey Epstein? Voter suppression? Locker room talk? Standing rock? Big bank bailouts, politicization of public health, the fact that two of the last three American presidents did not win the popular vote, withdrawal from the World Health Organization, Citizens United, did it happen when they tried to deny your rights and dignity based on your sexual or gender identity? Were you radicalized when the stock market soared while you went on unemployment? Were you radicalized when your DACA status became threatened? What was it for you? What was the moment when you began to get angry? Okay. Good. Now that we're all in the right mindset, allow me to share with you some tips so that you can commit some fun little acts of vandalism in your own neighborhoods. Stick with me here and I will do my best to equip you with the knowledge and motivation to commit fun little crimes of your very own. Breaking the law is easy, and fun, and anyone can do it. Here are 12 easy steps. Step 1. Mindset. Understand this reality. Crime is a social construct rather than a firm and absolute moral truth. The evidence of this fact is made clear by the absurd abundance of laws that uphold systems designed to maintain extreme wealth disparity and racism, and do little to protect the air we breathe, the land we farm, the bodies we inhabit, and the communities we love. Embracing this will free you from the internalized pressure to conform to the law. Step 2. Get out a pen and draw something really neat and wacky. Personally, as you know, I like to draw the sausage known as the hot dog. A hot dog is the common name for the Vienna sausage, known as the Wiener or Frankfurter Wurstchen, also, just called a Frank. But I really, really don't want to limit your imagination. You could literally draw anything your heart desires. A bratwurst, chorizo, Braunschweiger, and duel, Lieberwurst. Sapresada, Morangula, Kolbasa, Liverwurst. Honestly, any sausage will do. Let your greasy imagination be your guide. Step 3. Consider what might be on your new little sausage friend's mind. Perhaps your Frank shares your views on immigration reform. Perhaps it shares your understanding that America's oligarchs send the poor to fight wars for financial gain. Perhaps it believes that nationalism is strategically harnessed by those in power to suppress progressive reform. 
perhaps it believes that higher education is withheld from the masses in order to improve military recruitment, or that time healthcare to employment reinforces the notion that an individual's life is only valuable if it generates wealth. Perhaps it is thinking about how Jim Crow era statues were erected explicitly to maintain a racist, oppressive status quo. Maybe this we is meditating on the reality that the American empire is a snake that is eating its own tail, resulting in the rise of fascism, authoritarianism, and kleptocracy. Well, would you look at that. Your little sausage friend seems to have some big ideas and a lot to say. Make sure you listen closely. Step 4. Distill these thoughts into concise, catchy phrases that capture the essence of what your sausage buddy is thinking. Chingala Migra. No war but class war. Remember the Panama Papers? Rise up. Essential work, essential pay. It can even pull some info from headlines to make a point. For example, when the president's war crimes place us at the doorstep of a third endless Middle East war, Lockheed Martin stock increased 3.6% today. When the wealthy tell the poor to ditch social distancing and go back to work in the midst of a global pandemic for the sake of their bank accounts, remember to stand six foot longs apart. Maybe your illustration can even quote a famous folk singer as the current administration takes us to the brink of nuclear annihilation by taunting North Korea like a fucking child. Whatever you choose to say, you can be sure your message will be more handily received if it is delivered by a frankfurter sandwich. Step 5. It's time to get technological. Turn on your personal computer and make sure your scanning machine is set to scan your illustration at a very high resolution. This will allow you to enlarge the drawing without excessive pixelation. If you want to do some edits in the software program, feel free. I use software to make sure I've enlarged my frank to roughly 72 inches tall. I like them big and juicy. Once you're satisfied with your image, you're ready to print. Step 6. Printing. At this point it helps to have a friend who works at a print shop. If it's possible for you to score some free large prints, then you are a lucky duck. Otherwise, save it as a PDF file and print using the poster print setting in Adobe Acrobat. This will divide your 72 inch tall image into sections and print them off on standard size printer paper. After they are printed, you'll have to trim the margins and glue your image together. If you happen to be employed by Willow Tree, Ting, University of Virginia, or any other large office in town, you'll likely be able to make prints without anyone noticing the missing supplies. One important tip, always print on thin, cheap paper. Thin paper allows for an easier pasting experience later on. Step 7. Preparing your paste. We paste is cheap and easy to make. I won't go into details because there are tons of recipes online and generally any of them will get the job done. The recipes that suggest incorporating small amounts of craft glue will make a paste that is a bit more durable. Don't make your paste more than a few days before installing your artwork because the stuff can start to get stinky. Storing it in your fridge will give you a week or so before it starts to rot. Also, adding salt to the recipe can help to preserve. Note, the wee paste will still work if it starts to go rancid. It just smells a little bit like a pile of frat boy vomit outside of Bodo's on a Sunday morning. You can just plug your nose and go at it, anyways. Step 8. Pack up your supplies. Roll your print up and grab a paintbrush or roller and a container for your paste. If a ladder is necessary, bring one, unless you've already scoped out a pallet, garbage can, or other object you can use to stand on instead to get your print where it needs to be. Step 9. Wait for nightfall and try not to psych yourself out. But, remember, it's just a little bit of crime and you'll totally get away with it because police are bad at their jobs. 
Plus, remember also that vandalism is in the eye of the beholder, and nobody ever asked consent from you, or me, to display their statues of racist generals, or billboards for fast food restaurants. You got this. You got this. Step 10. Choose your wall. An ideal wall is highly visible during daytime and less visible at night so that you have some cover in the shadows while you're pasting up your designs. It's also fun to choose a wall you pass by regularly. This way you can laugh to yourself each day you see your sausage cartoon is still up. You should also try to find a wall that is not highly textured or extremely porous because it can make for a challenging installation. Cinder block walls and painted brick or concrete walls are excellent. Glass or sheet metal are perfect. Exposed brick is more of a challenge. A popcorn stucco wall is impossible. You'll also definitely want to check your surroundings for CCTV cameras. It's best to try to avoid all surveillance cameras while approaching your wall, but if you have to, you can wear a face covering and a brim pack to stay incognito. Conveniently, face coverings are currently on vogue and you won't look out of place concealing your identity. One more consideration for choosing your wall. Who owns it? If you can, check to make sure your artwork won't put undue stress on a small business owner. Step 11. Installation. After one last check over your shoulder to make sure nobody is approaching, you're ready to get to work. You'll first want to thoroughly cover your wall with paste. Get it on there really thick, especially if the wall is very porous or textured. After you have a thick coat on the wall, you'll want to carefully lay your print onto the wet wall. Do your best to avoid wrinkles and folds. Of course, you'll want to move quickly so you don't get caught, but take a deep breath and focus on the work at hand. You will be nervous the first few times, but try to stay focused because once your print starts to get sticky and wet from the paste, it can become difficult to work with. If you are collected and steady, you'll be able to stick your print to the wall straight and clean the first time, and it will save you the time and trouble later of having to try to fix any accidental folds or rips in your print. Use your brush or roller to apply a coat of paste over the top of your print. The paste dries clear, so don't worry much about how it looks initially. The top coat of paste helps protect your print from the weather and helps it conform to the cracks and textures of the wall. You should make sure that the print is saturated with the paste. Really use your brush or roller to push the print onto the wall, rolling out any bubbles that form under the paper. Step 12. Photographing your work. I always try to take a photo immediately after I put up a piece. This way, if it gets removed quickly I can at least have a photo to remember by as I weave over the, oh, so, tragic loss. I'll also make a daytime visit sometime that week while walking the dog or picking up groceries to take a photo of the work in daylight once the paste dries. That's it. There you go, you little underdog. Now you know how to commit fun little crimes of your very own. Aren't you a naughty little artist? Propaganda is the management of opinions and attitudes by the direct manipulation of social suggestion. Or, to oversimplify, it is storytelling, but with an agenda. This is something that the powers that be know all too well. Crafting influential narratives with powerful imagery is a tactic that American rulers have used to influence your thoughts and behaviors since the Empire's inception. From Manifest Destiny to Jim Crow, from the FBI's COINTELPRO disinformation campaign spanning the 50s, 60s and 70s, to the US Armed Forces occupation of Walt Disney Studios in the 40s, American exceptionalism has always relied on propaganda for the othering of populations in order to create and maintain division among us and undermine the collective power we possess. You are being lied to and manipulated constantly. Our classrooms, political speeches, songs, our holidays, our statues, our history books, 
They are all full of narratives that have been constructed to conveniently ignore the past transgressions of the state, against the people. They gloss over the violence, the carnage, the racism, the xenophobia. They reframe the manipulation. They champion the American dream and celebrate the statistical outliers who achieve social mobility, while sweeping aside the billions of stories that point to a different reality. Well, they don't have the monopoly on our voices. We all have our own stories. Every work of art tells a story. Every work of art tells a hundred stories. Let's get good at telling them with boldness and authority. Whether that's through street art, poetry, music, whether it's dramatic or satirical. And let's get good at listening, and sharing, and amplifying the authentic stories of those around us that deserve to be heard. The more we, ourselves, tell our own stories and experience, firsthand, the raw, real versions of each other, unfiltered through someone else's agenda, the more power we have. So, put your creative tools to work and see what happens, because, honestly, all I have is this stupid fucking anonymous hot dog cartoon. It's not even very neatly drawn. It's actually sort of sloppy. Thank you. I believe now we will open the floor to questions. If the technology cooperates I'll answer as many as we have time for. If we run out of time, feel free to message me on Instagram at stilts underscore walker. Okay, so virtual applause. That was wonderful. So like Stilt said, we do have time for questions. Um, hopefully, you know, some of you have um, sent some privately um, to Stilts. And I'm, I'm actually gonna, uh, once Emma's kind of back in um, from sharing the video, since uh, she, she coordinated with Stilts, I'm gonna let her sort of take over on, on how this is gonna work. Hot dog love right back to you, Stilts. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, yeah, so um, I'm looking in the chat. I wasn't able to see it during the video, but how incredible. I just, it's so good. It's so, so good. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, so we've got a couple of questions that came in there. I don't know if Stilts got anything um, uh, privately, but uh, I'm going to un- um, <laughs> I'm going to let Stiltswalker unmute themselves. My understanding was, um, oh, you know, this video will be available to anyone. Um, so I see a question that's coming, uh, that came up there. So uh, in the next week or week or so and a half, the, this presentation will be available on the Creative Mornings website, the Charlottesville chapter talks, all, all the talks. Have been recorded and so you can watch them again and and this will definitely be one I think that's going to be watched over and over again and share it widely because I think it's good good to do. Um, so I look it seems like Stiltswalker has unmuted themselves. Um, are Check. you there? Stilts? Check. Can you hear me? No questions yet. Feel free to throw something my way. Well I do see one question that came up in the chat Stilts and it was what's your personal Favorite, favorite Frank that you've created thus far? Um, another one came in. Uh, have you tried love and hope messages? Um, and what was the moment that stilts uh, became radicalized? You can take your time, of course. So what Stilts is doing, uh, we went through some technological uh, trials and errors. And so if you have a Mac, um, I'm sure you can do it on a PC. I just think I, I find Macs to be easier for these sorts of things. Um, either in your terminal, you can get, you can have your computer say anything you type. You type the code, or you type the word in say, and then type 
whatever you want, hit enter and your Mac will speak it. Um, even easier than that is if you set up in accessibility um, speech writing, you can type anything you want, highlight it, and then you have hotkeys that you can press and the computer will just, uh, and there's all sorts of voices you can change it to. If you could do robot voices, um, Siri would be on there, for example, um, as, as other voices are. Uh, I think still to work in a way, there's another question that came in, a dream location that you want to tag around Charlottesville or elsewhere. Um, and some looking for some clarification on what you define as becoming radicalized. Is that angry plus action, for example, is one of the questions that came from Elizabeth or one of the things. Um, I'm going to be quiet so Stilts might want to say something. So. Another question, Stilts. How did you come up with the name Stilts Walker? Angry plus action is a good definition. Well, you've got some agreement there, Elizabeth. I like that. So, full disclosure from me, I am such a terrible typist that this would be so much pressure I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> Trying to type something quickly. Nope. I'm really enjoying looking at the comments that came in during the talk. I wasn't able to see the chat when the movie was hosted. Um, yeah. You are awesome, totally brilliant. This is so great. All, all of these, I, yep. Oh, the virtual hugs. Thanks, Laura Lee. That's really nice to remember that part of it. And you know, maybe we can encourage Stoltz to answer some of these questions. Um, maybe on their Instagram. I don't know if they would, uh, their Instagram might be just dedicated to the, the pictures and the tags, so that might not be something they want to do, but um, I will say in coordinating this, the Instagram messaging worked really well and Stilts was incredibly open and gracious um, and willing to try this. And I think it turned out, I think it turned out pretty well. Diana, I like to bounce back and forth between just funny sayings and serious ones. The dog says what they want to say. My favorite, I like, remember to stand six footings apart. That one is just funny to me. Because cannibalism. <laughs> Because of cannibalism, yeah. That, uh, that, that footlongs. Yeah, not footings, footlongs. That one, I believe, is on Market Street Market. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremy, you remember? You 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 can. Yeah. This is hard to do. Uh -huh. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Laura Lee, who let the dogs out? Just kidding. Still, it's another option if if you're so inclined. You could put it in the chat, and we're happy to read it for you. Um, 
I really do believe these will best be answered in text form on Instagram messaging. Well, we can, we can do that. I will say, um, and I, I bet Aaron could back me up on this, um, that Stilts Walker uh, is open to answering all these questions and giving all this sorts of advice. And it's just this um, incredible uh, resource for our town and for what they're trying to do. Um, so please do engage uh, that way and, and um, uh, I had heard from another person who couldn't be on this call uh, say that they've already been uh, influenced to take their own action uh, because of the, the weenies that are around uh, and has taken pictures of, of their wheat pasting next to some of that. And so I, I'm excited to see what, what all you are going to do too. That's going to be going to be a fun thing. I don't feel like I can give you good answers quickly here. I'm totally happy to have a conversation there. You all are fantastic. I really hope you had fun this morning. Well, thank you, Stilts. I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I certainly had fun, and I was kind of watching the audience, and, and it seemed like everybody else was uh, just blown away by the video and and laughing and and all sorts of great things there's some applause going on for you as well so thank you for being flexible thank you for your time thanks for putting together such a rad video um and we're really looking forward to to what you're doing next and, and seeing them continue to pop up all over town so thank you thank you thank you all right and thank you to my team. I always want to thank the team, especially Emma, who coordinated all of this. And thanks to Aaron as well um, for your connection um, and also that great article. Um, so yeah, thanks to the team. And thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your Friday and an even better weekend and that you find ways to beat the heat because it's been hot. It's been a hot dog of a hot, I was trying to make a pun, didn't work. But anyways, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next time.